Hey guys, welcome to Concept and Coding. This is Shreyansh, and today in the Spring Boot series, we are going to cover the async annotation. There are a lot more things to cover in async annotation, and lot more things happen behind it. We will see in depth. But before I proceed further, these three Java topics, I would say that it's a prerequisite if you want to understand the async annotation properly. You should know how to create a thread and its life cycle. What is thread pool and thread pool executor, and what is future callable and computable future, and how it works? Okay, so let's start this. So here in this first, let me in very brief, I will tell you about thread pool and thread pool executor, and I want to make sure that we are all in same page, right? We have the same understanding of the thread pool and thread pool executor. But please check out these three videos, which are in depth. And it is available in Java series, which is a prerequisite to understand async annotation. Okay, what is thread pool? Thread pool is a collection of threads which are available to perform the submitted task. Once the task completed, threads get back to the thread pool and wait for the new task to assign. Means thread can be reused. Okay, so let's understand with this diagram. So in so there is a something understand is there is something called a pool in which we have pre-created the threads. We have pre-created the threads and available to pick the task. Now there is some queue available and application also involved, which is submitting the task. So this task gets submitted into this queue first. Now any thread which is free in this pool will pick the task from the front of the queue and start processing it. At once the task is completed, the thread goes back to this pool and now is available to pick any other task from the queue. Okay, so this thread pool executor involves couple of things like to understand this, there is something called right minimum pool size. Minimum pool size means what should be the minimum number of threads which should be pre-created. Maximum pool size. What is the maximum number of threads we can create? That is the number which says maximum pool size. Queue size. What should be the length of this queue? How many tasks it can accommodate? So this size tells this. So Determining this thing is very a good interview question also and determining these three things involve lot of consideration like what is your CPU memory and all these things which I have explained this in this video thread pool executor in the Java series. Okay, so but for understanding this thread pool executor, let's say that minimum pool size is two maximum pool size is four and the queue size is three just for now. And let's understand the behavior so that we all are in the same page that how the thread pool executor works. So now let's say that you have a queue with size 3, 0, 1, 2, and you have a pool of two threads, thread 1, thread 2, which is currently available minimum pool size. So it is free. Now let's say task is coming. Task 1 comes. So task 1 goes into the queue and Thread one will pick it. So task one is now getting processed by thread one. So this is now busy. Now task two is coming. Task two will be put into the queue, right? And task two will be picked by thread two. So thread two will take it and start processing it. Now both the threads are busy. Now let's say they haven't completed it. So the pool is currently, there is no free threads available. Okay. Now let's say that task three is coming. So task three will go into the queue. So currently both this task uh, one and two has already been removed because they have been processing. So task three is coming. So now here, if you see task three, is there any thread available which can pick this task? Currently, no, both the threads, thread one and thread two are busy. So task three will wait into the queue. Now let's say task four is coming. So 
so task 4 will go into the back of the queue is there any thread available which can pick no both are busy so it will wait into the queue now task 5 is coming again it will goes into the back of the queue and it will wait till any thread is free now task 6 is coming now what would happen to the task is is there any thread available no thread both the threads are busy so minimum pool size both the threads are busy is there any available size available space in the queue no queue is full there is no space so what shall we do for the task 6 shall we discard it no then it goes and check the max pool size hey what is the max pool size? Can I create more thread? Yes. Max pool size says that the maximum number of thread in a pool can be four. So currently we have only two. So it will create a new thread, uh, thread three. And now thread three will pick it. Task six will get picked by thread three. So task six is, is gonna pick by thread three and it is not there into the queue. Now let's say that task 7 is coming. Task 7, it will say, hey, any thread, available thread. So thread 3 is already processing task 6. Hey, any available thread there in the pool? No. Any space available in the queue? No. So shall we discard the task 7? It will check. What should be the maximum pool size? 4. What is available currently? 3. We can create one more. So it will create new thread, thread 4. And that will processing task seven, thread four. Okay, so this is also getting processed. Now let's say task eight is coming. What would happen to the task eight? Is there any new thread or free thread available? No. Is there any space available in the queue? No. It will check what is the maximum pool size. I can create four. So what is the number of thread? One, two, three, four. Already you have reached to the max. Now you can't do anything. This will get rejected. Now let's say that the thread one has processed the task one completed and it is now available. Now thread one is now available into the queue back again. So thread one is now available. Now it goes back to the pool again. So what thread one will do, it will check the queue and it will take the front of the queue. So task three. So task three will get now processed by thread one. So now it is now getting processed. So this is a very basic understanding of thread pool and thread pool executor, which I have explained in depth here. And this is the semantics. Like this is how we create a thread pool in Java. We create new thread pool executor object, provide a minimum pool size, maximum pool size, and what should be the queue size. There is something called keep a lifetime time unit hours, which you will get to know in this video itself, right? But for their uh, simplicity and the basic understanding and just kind of a quick recap, these three things are important. Minimum pool size, maximum pool size and queue size, which I have already told you how these three plays a crucial role in this task sequencing. Okay. Now let's start understanding how a sync annotation works. So a sync annotation is used to mark method that should run asynchronously, right? Asynchronously means in a new thread. So when you start a particular application, let's say, so it's always starting in a one, let's say thread one, or sometimes we call it as a main thread, right? So always one thread will get picked and start your program. Now what happens is whenever you have put a certain method as async, right? We are telling that, Hey, create a new thread. It will create some new thread, let's say thread two and that method will get executed in by this new thread. But our main thread is get now unblocked and will continue processing further. Okay, so here let's say we have async method. So async method, 
it will initiate a new thread and that will now continue processing whatever we have task available in that method. So it is getting executed by the new thread which is got spawned. But the main thread which is running that get unblocked and that will continue processing ahead. Okay. So runs in a new thread without blocking the main thread. So take this example. So here, first thing first, we have to put this annotation in our main application, Spring Boot application, where we have put this annotation, right? At the rate Spring Boot application. So we have to put an annotation, right? At the rate, enable async. What is the purpose of this annotation? The purpose of this annotation is, once you once a spring boot sees that hey this annotation is present it will create a bean for async classes which is required for processing the async task there are so many things async interceptors and there are so many other classes which get involved but they will only get their objects or their beans will get only be created when you will put this annotation otherwise spring unnecessarily will not create an or create a bean for those classes okay so whenever we have to use an async functionality for the async annotation we have to tell the spring that hey create a bean for those async uh, classes also so enable async is the annotation now i have written one very very simple method REST controller, very simple API, you already know at the rate get mapping, get user and very simple method. So here I am printing inside get user method. Whenever uh, we will invoke this API slash API slash get user, it, this will get invoked and it will print inside get user method and I am printing what is the thread name. So generally this is the main thread name, right? The main thread. Now here, if you see that I am invoking an another method, which is inside user service class and it is calling the async method. So this is the user service class, right? User service class managed by spring async method. So this is the method which is getting invoked. And now this method I have put at the rate async. Now, once I have put at the rate async mean, I am telling a spring that, Hey, this method should get be processed by new thread instead of the main thread which is running so this thread is the main thread which is uh, which is running now when this method get invoked this thread should be the new thread so this i am just printing the thread name inside async method name and what is the thread name so this should be different than the main thread so if we run this and see the output inside get user method this one inside get user method so this is like your main thread and here inside async method task one so here the thread name is task one async method what is the thread name task one so here if you see that these are the two different threads now if you run continuously so here i am running continuously so i have hit the endpoint get user then again i hit the endpoint get user just to show you that every time you will hit it will create a new thread here earlier it was created thread one then thread two then thread three then thread four so every time a new thread will get created inside async method task uh, task five so this is the thread name it has given new async method six seven eight right new async method generally i am printing the thread name so here if you see every time you will hit it will just create a new thread okay so this is what async annotation does looks very simple right but not so now let's come to this question how does this async annotation create a new thread here when i put an async annotation and whenever a main thread is invoking this it creates a new thread like okay thread created inside async thread which which thread this thread 
so it is different than what's your parent thread so how does this async annotation creates a new thread many places you will find that spring boot uses by default simple async task executor which create new thread every time blindly right so here if you say i have just put at the rate async nothing else i haven't provided any thread executor like or a thread pool executor that this should be the minimum number of pool maximum number of pool or even pool is present or not i haven't told that so many places you will see they will say that hey spring boot by default using simple async task executor means blindly create a new thread every time it is required i will say this is not a fully correct answer and you might get stuck in a follow up questions but let's understand like what is the right answer and how this exactly work internally okay but before i proceed further here if you see if we see below the spring boot framework code so this is one spring boot internally one some async class here if you see async execution interceptor inside this you will find this code what it say first it will try to identify get default executor if it able to find some default executor when we, when i say default executor considered as a thread pool executor where you have a minimum pool size maximum pool size what should be the queue size like this so first spring also try to see hey can i use any default executor if default executor is null then only it use spring async task a uh, simple async task executor this one but what but in what all scenario it able to find a default executor here if you see this if you see this example above where i have just put at the rate enable async and at the rate async so it is using task 1 task 2 task 3 and task 5 task 6 task 7 task 8 and if you go proceed further it will again start from task 1 task 2 task 3 means there you will see that the question should have come to you if you do debug right hey i am using at the rate async and from everywhere else according to their logic spring boot should have used simple async task executor so it should have create new thread every time so it should be like 8 9 10 11 12 12 but after 8 why again it's going back to the one is there any some kind of uh, thread pool involved so answer lies here and we will see that first spring boot see any default executor it can use if it if the answer is yes it will use that if the answer is no then it will use simple async task executor now let's see different use cases and we will find our answer use case 1 I am creating a simple Spring Boot application. I have just put at the rate enable async, letting Spring Boot knows that hey, create a bean for async classes because I am going to use at the rate async operation. If you see my app config at the rate configuration, it's empty. I haven't provided any kind of functionality or my custom thread pool executor. Nothing. Now in the class. i have put one async method similarly like above i have told i have put at the rate async right and i have one uh, controller which calls this method i have showed you above right so let's say that that controller is still present there which invoking this async method okay so now what would this what would happen here now this is exactly the same as the above one how after thread task 8 again task 1 task 2 the thread name coming so what would happen so during application startup when you start an application spring boot sees that no thread pool task executor present so it creates its default thread pool task executor so what spring boot does is it check 
हे डज डेवलपर और डज एप्लीकेशन डिफाइन एनी थ्रेट पुल एग्जीक्यूटर और थ्रेट पुल टास्क एग्जीक्यूटर नो वी हैव नॉट प्रोवाइडेड एनी थिंग सो वॉट स्प्रिंग बुट डज इज स्प्रिंग बुट क्रिएट्स इट्स ओन और क्रिएट्स इट्स डिफॉल्ट थ्रेट पुल टास्क एग्जीक्यूटर विथ बिलो कॉन्फिग्रेशन कोर पुल साइज मीन्स मिनिमम पुल साइज एट मैक्सिमम पुल साइज इज योर इंटीजर डॉट मैक्स वैल्यू and the queue capacity is again integer dot max value okay but this is how it created and that's where we see that when i run it it say 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so 8 8 threads were available so they picked it right after that when i put again it again started from 1 2 3 4 5 6 right no new thread created but here if you see it has certain disadvantage also because the max pool size are very big even the queue size are very big okay so it has certain disadvantage and also i will tell uh, before coming to the disadvantage of this i will tell you that here spring boot try to see thread pool task executor so see there is something called thread pool executor which is java plain java and there is something called thread pool task executor this is a spring this is a spring wrapper this is a spring wrapper around this okay so spring boot sees what thread pool task executor this one okay so here if you see the thread pool task executor is nothing but a spring boot object which is just a wrapper around thread pool executor so here if this is the class thread pool task executor if you go inside this internally what it is doing creating a plain java thread pool executor only so it's just a wrapper which again creates a same thread pool executor plain java thread pool executor okay so when you provide this kind of code spring boot again check this thread pool task executor if no thread pool task executor present it will create its own default one with this configuration and this configuration has certain disadvantage which is not recommended all to use first under utilization of thread under utilization of thread means with fixed mean pool size and unbounded queue i told you the flow what happened the maximum pool size will only come into the picture when the pools this are busy and the queue is totally filled but here in this if you see the queue size is too big it's a very rare that this queue will get filled up so means even though your application can afford that okay i can create new threads but still new thread will not get created because the queue is not yet filled so that's why i say that the first problem with this under utilization of thread even though you can afford to create a new thread more than 8 but it won't create because the queue is not filled itself because queue size is too big high latency since the queue size is too big they will keep on waiting so now let's say that your all the eight threads are busy thread 1 to thread 8 are busy now any task which are coming task 9 task 10 they will keep on waiting into the queue until queue is not filled up before it a new thread get spawned from the max pool size so here if you see since the queue capacity is too huge this task will keep on appending and they will keep on waiting for this out of this eight thread only to get free and then they will pick it right we we are not creating new threads from the max pool size because queue is not getting filled up so they will keep on waiting into the queue itself so high latency is another problem with this one thread exhaustion thread exhaustion is there that see it is very rare rare in this thread exhaustion but it's possible how come 
से देर इज नो कंट्रोल कोर पुल साइज एट क्यू कैपेसिटी इज दिस एंड मैक्सिमम पुल साइज इज दिस एवरीथिंग इज लाइक नॉट इनफाइनाइट राइट वॉट इज लाइट कोर पुल साइज एट ऑल थ्रेड वन टू थ्रेड एट आर बिजी द क्यू बिकम फिल्ड कंप्लीटली फिल्ड जीरो टू टू वन फोर सेवन फोर एट थ्री सिक्स फोर सिक्स ऑल द टास्क गॉट फिल्ड अप लेट से एंड नाउ इट विल स्टार्ट क्रिएटिंग थ्रेड्स फ्रॉम द मैक्स टिल द मैक्स पुल साइज इज नॉट रीच एंड नाउ लेट से दैट बिकॉज ऑफ सम इशू इट इज कीप ऑन क्रिएटिंग अ न्यू थ्रेड्स एंड दिस लिमिट इज ऑल्सो रीच नाउ यू आर आउट ऑफ थ्रेड एंड यूर एप्लीकेशन विल क्रैश इट्स वेरी अनलाइकली हेयर बिकॉज द साइज आर टू बिग बट थ्रेड एग्जॉशन इज पॉसिबल बिकॉज नो बडी इज कंट्रोलिंग दैट वेयर शुड गेट स्टॉप एंड दे कीप ऑन क्रिएटिंग द थ्रेड्स टिल इट इज फिनिश अनदर इज हाई मेमोरी यूसेज सी ईज थ्रेड नीड सम मेमोरी नाउ जस्ट अज्यूम दैट इफ यू आर क्रिएटिंग सो मेनी थ्रेड नाउ लेट से दैट ऑल एट थ्रेड इज क्रिएटेड queue is full now you are try to create a thread still this max pool size is reach you are creating so many threads and there is a chance that high memory usage your uh, system will perform uh, performance will get degrade so there are so many see these are just four disadvantage if you go further right there are so many other disadvantage comes into the picture but this four are very sufficient to say that we should not go with the default thread pool executor functionality so we should never use this so use case one we should never use this we just put at the rate enable async and just put at the rate async no so what should we do let's see the use case two creating our own custom thread pool task executor right i am saying task executor means spring one not the plain java this is a wrapper which internally will create a plain java one so here if you see in the Sp spring boot application i am creating at the rate enable async it will tell spring boot to uh, initialize classes uh, which is required and this is the method the same method where i am putting at the rate async only first first ignore this i'll tell you first focus only on this one uh, it's exactly the same right at the rate async i am putting and this async method it's uh, just printing this now inside this configuration i am providing my own thread pool task executor own thread pool task executor so i am creating a new object of thread pool task executor providing a minimum pool size 2 maximum pool size 4 and the queue size is 3 so here you know that in the plain java i have already told you in plain java how you can do it in plain java you can do it like this right new thread pool executor minimum maximum like this right but here in the spring it's just a wrapper right so it's a little bit uh, uh, read uh, like readability is better so i am putting core pool size here you can set the max pool size you can set the queue capacity and even you can give the uh, thread name prefix like i want this thread name prefix my thread hyphen and you can initialize it now what would happen when i start an application during application startup what spring boot say that spring boot will try to identify if we see this code first step spring boot will try to identify see any default executor it can use and yes now here in this case during application startup spring boot sees that thread pool task executor bean is already present we because we have created a bean right for this so this bean is already present so spring boot will not creates its own thread pool executor it will use over itself so see even though we haven't tell here which one to use but still it will use this only right so during application startup spring boot sees that the thread pool task executor bean is present so this will make it default 
so either you use it you will get the same or either if you provide the name which explicitly executor so here the bean i have provided a name so the same name you can give it here so either you specifically mention that okay i want to use you hey use my executor then also it will use this only even if you don't use this and if you even if you just put at the rate async it will not use simple async task executor that is wrong it will use our only why i already told you it first try to see is there any default is there any thread pool task executor been present if no spring boot creates its own if it is present spring boot use that only so now here if you see that in both the scenario whether you use it without name or with name the output would be same now if you call multiple time so i am calling multiple times so each time you will see that the, this is the main thread and when our async method invoke my thread one so here if you see i have given the prefix my thread hyphen second time my thread two so i have what is the minimum pool size i have given two right and threads are got free as soon as there is nothing high processing i am doing so the third time i am running again this only pick next time i am running thread two pick next time i am running again thread one pick so here if you see this two threads are able to handle all the task and if we have to understand the queue and all so let's say that i am putting sleep in the async method so in the async method i purposely added the sleep after putting inside async method and i put a sleep just to make sure that okay once the thread pick this they busy and they are not get free and then test it so now what happen is say first time i ran minimum pool size is 2 max is 4 and the queue size is 3 right 2 4 3 yeah so now here if you see task 1 come thread 1 got picked so only one left second task comes thread 2 got picked so no free threads available in the minimum pool it's now zero now more task is coming so it is just putting into the queue so here if you see no thread get created so it just putting task 3 task 4 task 5 now here if you see task 6 is coming what happen is another thread got invoked because maximum is 4 so one more thread comes in a new thread comes into the picture now that is also free and uh, that is also busy now another thread is coming uh, another task is coming seven all three this two and this three are busy queue is full again i can create one more so thread four created and task seven is getting processed so this is also busy now eight is coming task eight all four threads are busy queue is full task is get rejected okay task get got rejected so now here if you see that the thread pool is working like how we want it based upon our analysis what should be good for our system we have come up with this number and now it's working as expected we are not allowing that you can create more threads apart from this number so this is you can say recommended solution okay and one one answer you have got that even though we are using at the rate async it is not picking simple async task executor because first it will check any thread pool task executor bean is present and yes it is present now let's understand the use case 3 very interesting use case creating our own thread pool executor but the java one in the previous one we have created a custom thread pool task executor a spring one which is spring looks for but what if we create a java one here now here if you see the same thing i have put at the rate enable async and now here i am using at the rate async only but here i am using plain java 
plain java to create a thread pool executor not thread pool task executor which is for spring i am using plain java but i am creating a bean for the executor now what would happen what would happen at if i run this will it will this executor be picked no what would happen is i told you during application startup spring boot sees that hey thread pool executor the java one bean is present so it do not create its own default or try to even look for thread pool task executor itself so spring wrapper one is like a second priority the first priority is that hey if the java thread pool executor we have itself defined if you if you use thread pool task executor internally it will create a java thread pool executor this command but if we itself have provided the thread pool executor right this executor is now instance of thread pool executor okay so since we have provided this spring boot will not even look for this thread pool task executor so now in this case what would happen is this one the default executor come as null and once it is come as null it will pick simple async task executor right so that's the you can say that the use case where it only pick simple async thread executor where we have provided our own plain java thread pool executor right then spring boot will not even create an instance of thread pool task executor right and if you are using async then at this point of time spring will go for simple async task executor now here if you see if i run now here if you see the first time application main run it pick simple async task executor 1 second time 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 see after 8 it just keep on 10 11 now it will not go after 8 again 1 it will just keep on going if you keep on hitting it will keep on going now here is the name thread name itself say async simple async task executor because we have provided this thread pool executor the plain java one so what to do we we have to provide this we have to here provide a proper name okay whenever you have used the plain java thread pool executor we have to tell specifically spring boot that hey use this executor async and give that executor name then it will pick your thread 1 thread 2 my thread 1 my thread 2 so whatever i am giving okay so uh, always remember whenever you are using plain java executor you are uh, so you have to specifically provide the name to the async but if you are using spring thread pool thread ex uh, thread pool task executor without even providing it will work without even providing it will work like this because the code will look for any thread pool task executor present okay and also you know that this simple async task executor is not recommended because of the same reason thread exhaustion since blindly creating a new thread with every async request might lead up to thread exhaustion thread creation overhead since threads are not reused thread management like creation destroying is an additional overhead high memory usage every thread required some memory let's say uh, if there are more threads currently running in parallel they required more memory so your application performance degrades so we should not use like if you are using your plain java thread pool executor then you should not use add the rates async simply you have to use specifically the name so that this get picked up okay i hope 
this uh, i know that the answer of this solution what is the default executor is picked up by spring is not that straightforward so with this three use cases i told you what is the default behavior and what should be the recommended solutions to use but let's say that <clears throat> if you see that by this point of time you say that hey i don't want all this confusion man use case 1 use case 2 use case 3 in the use case 1 i can use directly at the rate async in use case 2 i can also use at the rate async and also at the rate async with name like some name given and in the use case 3 i all mandatory have to use async with name i don't want my developers to get confused right what uh, what to follow so there is very another simple way and this is i would say that mostly industry standard so what it was say is that i always want to set my executor as default one right no matter whether if you use async or at the rate async name doesn't matter only <coughs> my executor will get picked up okay so there is another way so another way is that during the configuration class app config implement async configurer implement this class okay and once you implement this class you have to override this method get async executor now since you have overridden this mat get async executor this is now your thread pool executor you can put whether thread pool task executor or you can use thread pool uh, plain java thread pool executor you can use anything uh, right return type should be executor either you can use plain java thread pool executor or thread pool task executor whatever the now you wanted you can use it now what happen with this is that even if you are using at the rate async right always this will get picked up so you never have to worry about hey i am using plain java here now since i am using plain java i have to specifically mention the name what is the my thread pool executor name now that worry goes now you don't have to worry about whether plain java or thread pool task executor spring one now since you have done on uh, override this one now your method get invoked to decide which executor you to use since we have overrided this now the control will come here and this executor will use and that would be our default one it will always find the an executor okay and also remember one thing here if you are using this approach very very important since this is not a bean and here we are creating a new object every time since this see this is just an override method this is not a bean you know that bean by default is singleton and here we have to take care of that so i have created a private thread pool executor object if thread pool executor is null then only i am creating an object if object is already present then return it and i have created this method as synchronize so that if two threads are coming two requests are coming parallelly they will get only one object for my thread pool executor so only this handling required if you are using this okay so this is another industry standard so in if you are working in your company you might see this also in uh, like developers are using this right so this is also an acceptable way of working implement async configure but take care of the singleton here you have to take it manually and but in the above one add since we are using at the rate bean bean are by default singleton so that is uh, automatically taken care so that is one way where you can avoid like i don't have to give name what is the use case one use case two use case three you will always use at the rate async and it will always pick your executor okay so this is just an output i showed i am using here java java thread pool executor 
and even though i am using at the rate async mine got picked up not simple async task executor okay do practice it with your hand and in the part 2 i will cover that there are some more topics i want to cover in this exception handling async method return type transaction management uh, with the async method and uh, there are some interview questions so that i will cover in the part 2 part but i hope this is totally clear like answer is not always straight forward like spring boot uses default simple async task executor no there is more to it okay guys any question please feel free to ping me in the comment section we can discuss more thank you bye